of what's going on in the world and people asking me questions like, is this the end of the world and what does this mean? And, and every time I've asked a person this question, do you know what the mark of the beast is? I even asked somebody Friday at work just two days ago and they looked at me like, no, never heard of it. I said, you never heard of the mark of the beast? No, no. I said, have you ever heard of 666? Oh, yeah, I've heard of that. Well, what do you think that means? I don't know. Isn't it like um, some rock band or isn't it like some form of the World Wrestling Federation or something? I don't know. But what does it mean? Something that important people just don't know anything about. So and then um, when I came back from vacation, I had like a thousand emails waiting for me and I went through as many as I could. One of them was an excerpt of probably the most um, well-known, popular uh, podcaster in the world right now is a gentleman by the name of Joe Rogan. His podcast is called The Joe Rogan Experience. And um, he actually read a portion of scripture because this subject came up and him and his guest, they had no idea what this mark of the beast meant. So they actually read a portion of scripture from the book of Revelation, and they didn't mock it. They didn't make fun of the because it was coming from the Bible. Oh, you crazy Christians, you believe that stuff? They were reading it, and they were asking each other, well, what do you think that means? This is a subject that's becoming more and more predominant in all segments of society. So I felt like this is something I needed to talk about. So my message today is entitled, The Mark of the Beast. Now, the portion of scripture that was read, and um, it probably the best explanation or introduction into this concept, is Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. It says, And he causeth all, referring to the second beast, the false prophet, he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of the name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Now, when they read this on the Joe Rogan experience, they looked at each other and said, what in the world do you think that means? Well, buried right in there, it says, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding. And you know what? If you understand any portion of this at all, do you really realize how blessed you are? Because most people in the world have no idea. They're stumbling around in the dark. That word mark in the Greek is the word karagma, and it means a stamp, an imprinted mark, a brand, as in branding horses or cattle, a thing carved, a graven work of idolatrous images. Now, this mark, many people say it could be a tattoo, it could be a stamp, but in other explanations, it says that it's a a scraping, an etching, and a badge of servitude. Now, you get computer chips come from a hard rock called silicone, and they scrape it to make a computer chip. So there's the scraping. And then the etching through microscopic CAD-CAM technology, they can put circuit boards on that little piece of silicone. And then the way you will receive this is by a badge of servitude, by bowing and pledging allegiance. Now, some people say, well, this Antichrist, that the false prophet's going to try to get people to worship and obey, well, what is the Antichrist? Some people say it's a system, like it's a computer system. Some people say it's, it's an organization like a cabal, the Illuminati, the New World Order. What is it? Well, it very plainly says here it's the number of the beast for it is the number of a man it's a man and that word man in the greek is means a human being this antichrist or substitute christ is a human being 
Now, Satan, remember what the Apostle John said in 1 John? He said, the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. That was 2,000 years ago. Satan, ever since he was um, the fall and he was kicked down into the planet Earth and Adam and Eve lost their place in the Garden of Eden, Satan has been trying to build his own kingdom on the planet Earth. And the first Antichrist, the word anti means substitute, the first substitute Messiah was a guy named Nimrod who built a tower. And you know the story of that? They all joined together and God confused their languages. That's why some people say Sprechen Sie Deutsch and other ones say Parlez-vous Francais. And we say, hi, I'm going to the store to buy a loaf of bread. Different languages <laughs> to confuse. The word Babel means confusion. But he was the first one. Then there was a man named Eusebius, a Greek philosopher who wanted to build a one world government. And then there was all the Caesars of Rome. There was Genghis Khan and Alexander the Great. And then there was a guy you may have heard of. His name was Adolf Hitler. They were all trying to build a one world government that they were in charge of. But God says, uh uh uh, not time. But that spirit has always been working in the world. It's a man. Now the number 603 score and 6, a score is 20. What's 20 times 3? 60. 60. So 600, 60, and 6, where the number 666 comes from. And the word 666, that phrase, 603 score and 6, in the Greek, the name of it, or the, I'm sorry, the definition of it says, a mystical number the meaning of which is clear when it is written in Hebrew letters means Nero Caesar. Now, does that mean Caesar, Nero Caesar is the Antichrist and he's dead now, so it's all over with? And that means we've already been through the tribulation period and we're now living in the millennial reign. Aren't you disappointed? I know I am. No, that's not what it means at all. God's giving us He's pointing us in a direction. Remember what he said, for those who have wisdom and those who have understanding, Nero was the emperor at the time. And what the Caesar is, is he the leader of the Roman Empire? Now, I don't have time to go into all this, but the whole statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream, and Daniel interpreted the head of gold, the chest of silver, the belly of uh, brass, the legs of iron, and the toes were intermingled with iron and clay. Those ten toes represent the reunited Roman Empire. So the Antichrist, the substitute Christ, at the last days is going to be a form of Nero Caesar, someone who's going to rule and reign over the reunited Roman Empire. And today it's called the European Common Market. Now I'm not going to go into the subject of who that Antichrist could be. That's for another day. But I want to read that again to you in a paraphrased version. Revelation 13, 16 through 17 in the paraphrase says, He required everyone, great and small, rich and poor, slave and free, to be tattooed with a certain mark on the right hand or on the forehead. And no one could get a job or even buy in any store without the permit of that mark which was either the name of the creature or the code number of his name. Here is a puzzle that calls for careful thought to solve it. Let those who are able interpret this code, the numerical value of the letters of his name, add to 666. So that's what the Bible has to say about the mark of the beast. Now, it says... Those who have wisdom, let them have understanding. God does not leave us in the dark. He wants us to understand things that most people in the world don't. That's why when Jesus was here, he spoke in parables. They make perfect sense to us. But the people there was like, what? What are you talking about? A treasure hidden a field, a pearl of great price? I mean, a sower throwing seed? What does that mean? Makes perfect sense to us. Because we have been given that wisdom. Jesus said this in Luke 10, 21. 
In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit. He was so excited inside. And he said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou has hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. Some people are just too smart for their own good. Did you ever hear the old saying, book smart and life dumb? I've met a lot of people like that. I know a lot of people like that. Some people, their own intellect gets in their way. But God wants to reveal things to have babe, baby-like simple trust and faith in him and believe his word at, at its face value, and he will reveal things to them that other people can't even comprehend. Now, this whole concept of a mark, whatever that could be, I mean, is that anything that could possibly happen today? One of the other emails that was sent to me while I was on vacation, I opened it up, and it was a gentleman who had um, just the video on his phone, and it wasn't real good quality. You couldn't pick up what country this was in, but you saw a line of people I'm just judging. It looked like maybe a quarter of a mile long, just wrapping around all these stores and even around these big buildings. And all these people are just patiently waiting in line. So the man walked to the front of the line. And you know what was at the front of the line? There was this young woman who was kneeling on the sidewalk and putting her head down real close. There was this big silver orb about that big that had the scanning ability in it. And it was reading her retina and the iris of her eye. Just as you have fingerprints that out of the 7 billion people on earth, nobody else has your fingerprints. Nobody else on earth has your iris pattern or your retina pattern. So it was reading those. And then they said, okay, you can get up and go now because now you don't have to have money you don't have to carry a credit card. Wherever you go, just let someone scan your eye, and then you're good to go. Instead of taking money out of your debit card, we'll just automatically take it out of your account because just scanning your retina. And they could have held that orb up at eye level. However, the person, how tall they were, just held it. But they purposely did it so you had to bow down and kneel and get down on the ground Remember one of the definitions of the word mark is a badge of servitude? It's just like bowing before an idol. They bowed before this thing and put their head in there and let this thing pick up the scan of their eyes. So could something like that happen? It's already happening. Two major stores in our country, Aldi's and Whole Foods, are already starting this and they're saying, maybe the beginning of next year they're going to institute this, that you can have your palm scanned by them. So in order to get into the store, you just scan your palm, and then they go in there and they, oh, David Michael's here. He just bought a whole basket full of rutabagas, and he bought some uh, tan tuna in a can, and he bought this, and now I go up to the register, scan my palm again, no money comes out of my pocket, no credit card, nothing. It just comes right out of my account because before I can do all this, I have to register with Aldi's or Whole Foods what my bank account number is. And it all just comes out. How convenient. And it's going to be promoted because nobody can steal your credit card. Or nobody can hack into your account and, and st steal something because it's all going to be in the palm of your hand. And just like nobody has your iris pattern, nobody has your fingerprint, nobody has the same design on their palm. And what they say that the scanner can do, it actually, it's like an x-ray. It reads right through your hand because nobody has the same vein, vein pattern on the back of your hand. Remember those gypsies you'd go and they'd do palm reading? That's because yours is unique. Now, I'm not promoting palm reading, but I'm just saying you are unique. So you just run that over there, and it's all set and ready to go. I've seen prototype commercials of music icons and sports figures saying, be hip, get chipped. And they're talking about getting a chip under your forearm. And there's something called Digital Angel. It's the size of a grain of rice. 
and it goes under your skin and through global positioning satellites, they know where you are everywhere you go. And you say, how could they do that? Well, do you have a cell phone? They already know everywhere you go. It's already happening. But it'll be in this little grain of rice, digital angel, in your skin. Now, they've been doing that for years with InfoPet, because if your doggie runs away, you can go find Fido down on 123 Main Street. But now they're going to promote it as, you don't want your kids to be abducted, do you? So you got to get digital angel in them so that if someone steals them, they'll know right where they are and we can go rescue them. And that's a great thing because we don't want anyone's child to be hurt. But it's going to be promoted. Now you don't have to have a credit card. No money. You don't have, I know people already. I was talking to a family member the other day who told me, I never carry money with me. Everything goes on my debit card. Money never comes out of my pocket. I don't even have any with me. So getting us thinking into that mindset. There's a program that they're experimenting with in a few other countries, and they want to start instituting it here, where if you're willing to get chipped with this digital angel, the government will give you $2,000 a month for the rest of your life. How many people do you think are willing to sign up for that? Because they have no idea what this mark of the beast is. People don't even know what it is. So, yeah, sure, I'll get it. 2000 a month, and I don't have to carry credit cards with me or money anymore? Sure, sign me up for that. Now, there's something that's very prominent now. And um, I know there's like, I think it's three states in the country that said we will not allow this in our banking system. I'm sure you've all heard of digital currency. You know, many, many years ago, the way people traded is if I was a farmer and you were a trapper, I'd give you a bushel basket of corn if you'd give me some raccoon skins that I could make a hat out of. It was the bartering system. But then general stores opened up. And it was hard to bring all these goods in there and trade for, you know, whatever goods you needed, a pair of pants or a, a pot and pan. So they came up with gold and silver. And, I mean, there's coins that go way back thousands of years. And, but it's hard to carry a whole bunch of gold around with you and silver. So they started to make paper currency. And as I'm sure most of you know, at one time, if you had a dollar bill or a $10 bill, you could go to the bank and say, hi, Mr. Banker, here's my, my $10 bill. I'd like $10 worth of gold, please. And they had to give it to you because the money was backed on the gold standard. Well, this lovely little organization who cares so deeply about us called the Federal Reserve System, and in conjunction with others, took money off the gold standard. Now, I haven't looked into this for a while, but the last time I did, the United States Treasury Service to print a bill, doesn't matter what number's on there, if it's a one, a five, a 10, a 20, a 50, a 100, they used to make $500 bills, I don't know if they still do. They used to have a $1,000 bill, they used to have a 10,000 and a $100,000 bill. They don't have those anymore. They don't want people having that much money walking around with. So, but whatever that, is written on that bill, it costs the United States Treasury Service five cents to print. And then there's nothing backing it. There's no gold to back it. The Federal Reserve, well, they're nice because it says federal. They're part of our government. No, they're foreign bankers who took control of our banking system. And I could go into Amschel Rothschild and all that. I don't have time to go into that. But they determine, all right, let's print, a dot, let's print a bill and put a 20 on it. Now, I'm going to give it to you and say, here's this. Just trust me, it's worth $20. There's nothing to back it. It's a piece of paper. And if you look at any bill, it says on the bottom, a Federal Reserve note. There's nothing to back that. I said it's worth $20, so you better believe me. And then I'll say, uh, let's say today... Um, if I give you this 20, I'm only going to charge you 10% interest to pay that $20 back. And it cost me 5 cents to print it. 
Gee, I wonder why foreign bankers are so wealthy. I wonder why Amshel Rothschild said, in any country, you give me control of the money and I care not who makes the laws. So with digital currency is the next step. There's not, you know, they're trying to already get rid of coins. Have you been, I've been to a number of fast food restaurants and when you order something, they say, would you like me to round that up so you don't have to carry change? Because who wants to walk around with 47 cents in your pocket? So let's just let us round it up. Well, you round up. If you don't want your 47 cents, give it to me. I'll take all the 47 cents you want to give me. That adds up. But they're already trying to get rid of coins. Now they want to get rid of the dollars and just go to digital. So with digital currency, if you don't have that little chip in your forearm or your forehead, guess what? They can shut you down. It's already happening around this country that um, people have had their bank accounts frozen and they can't get money out. It's their money, but they can't get it taken out because they may not like your politics. They may not like what you said. I mean, little old me and our little old church, I've already had videos taken off of YouTube because I'm saying things that somebody thinks is not right for the rest of the world to hear. But some people may say, well, I don't like the way you voted or the way you, you're promoting a certain candidate. Your bank account's frozen. And one of the worst banks doing that is the Bank of America. And you know who the major stockholder is of the Bank of America? The Chinese government. So with digital currency, playing in conjunction with this mark of the beast, it's all going to be set because what did John say? He said, without this mark, without the number of the beast, you can't buy or sell. Now, how in the world did a 90-year-old fisherman stuck out in the Aegean Sea 2,000 years ago know about this? Unless maybe God told him, who knows everything. We're seeing it fulfilled right in front of us. Now, oh, by the way, I... I in the whole realm of digital currency, I have a friend who was trying to buy a house and he was talking to, you know, how you get pre-approved for a mortgage. This person's very good with their money and they've been saving money. They didn't want to put it in the bank because they didn't know what's going to happen with banks. So they've been saving it. And you know what they were told by three different mortgage companies? We won't accept, they call it mattress money. We won't accept cash. It's got to go through a bank so we can verify it. So you control the money, you control people's lives. Now this whole concept of the mark of the beast, eh, so what? So you get a mark under your hand, who cares? If you got to do it this way, just do it. But there's serious consequences to this mark of the beast. In Revelation chapter 16 and verse 2, it says, And the first went... Now, this is referring to the angels who poured out the vials on the, upon the earth. The first angel went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Remember we talked about, and I even showed you videos of the giant, that 90-foot human figure that they're they're going to put in 21 different cities around the world that it's just it's a kind of a generic like a mannequin but you can superimpose anybody's face on it i can go into a phone booth it'll do a retina scan and a scan of my whole body and then project me up on this 90 foot um, statue and it moves and it'll talk with it'll do my voice pattern and with my voice pattern say anything it wants to say so just like Nebuchadnezzar had them build an image of him and whoever didn't bow down and worship it were thrown into the fiery furnace. And if you don't believe me, ask Meshach, Shadrach, and Amendigo. They said, I ain't bowing to no, nobody but God. So that's what this is referring to, that people will bow down and worship this image. Now, for those who have the mark, something is going to happen to them. 
It's going to be a noisome and grievous sore. The word noisome in the Greek means troublesome, injurious, and destructive. The word grievous means, in a physical sense, diseased or blind, and in a spiritual sense, evil and wicked. And the word sore means a wound producing a discharge or a pus, like in an ulcer. So this thing that's going to be implanted under people's forearm or their forehead, something in that is going to burst or there's going to be some kind of radioactive leaking or something's going to happen that these people are going to break out in terrible sores. And the book of Revelation says people are going to claw at themselves and wish that they could die, but they won't. Now, we've never heard of any medical procedures that had side effects, have we? <laughs> That's what's going to be one of the side effects from this receiving this mark. Here's the worst side effect of receiving the mark in Revelation 14, 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Oh, it's a good thing that that's not true, isn't it? It's just a fable. But what if it is true? That's a pretty heavy consequence. Now, you may say, because what I think, God is a God of mercy. And as long as you're breathing air, there's always a chance to ask him to forgive you, and he will. But why is it if you get this mark, there's no hope? I've seen videos <clears throat> of this one um, organization. They were doing a, a surgery on a man, and they had opened up his, his skull. Now, you may or may not know, but the brain has no feeling to it. Now, the skull around it and all the tissue has a lot of nerve endings. But once you open the skull and the brain is exposed, it feels nothing. So this man's laying on a table and there's a sheet from like here up. So he can't see anything that's going on behind him. And there's a group of doctors behind him. And um, they ask this man, uh, Mr. Smith, um, what's your favorite color? It's blue. Where do you live? 123 Main Street. Is it wrong to kill somebody? Well, of course it is. And then the, the, the one surgeon says, watch this, to the camera. He says, Mr. Smith, what's your favorite color? Blue. Where do you live? 123 Main Street. And he goes, watch. And he gets the scalpel, and he touches a certain part of the brain. And he says, is it wrong to kill somebody? And he goes, well, I don't know. I don't think so. What changed? Science... And medical science has discovered the part of the human brain that gives you the rationale between what's right and what's wrong. They've also think that they've discovered, I saw another video with a bunch of scientists, medical people, and social engineers all excited. We think we found the part of the brain that gives somebody the ability to have faith or to believe in something. And they're saying, we can alter that so that people will believe what we want them to believe. So I'm just, I'm not saying thus saith the Lord. I'm just saying you put these things all together. Could it be if you get this mark, it alters something in your brain so that you can't believe and you can't ask God to forgive you. Because it says in, also in Revelation that when all these terrible things come upon the earth, those that have received the mark, they're going to blaspheme God. So instead of saying with all these sores and, and pain, just say, God, please forgive me. I'm sorry. They're going to blaspheme him. And that word blaspheme in the Greek means to vilify. They're going to shake their fist at God and say, I hate you. Because their part of their brain has been destroyed. 
And you say, well, still, that doesn't sound very fair with a loving God, but nobody made you get that mark. Nobody made you. I know there's going to be a lot of pressure for people to receive that mark, but don't do it. Don't do it. Now, these things are all in place. It's like playing a game of chess. All the men are on the chessboard, but the first pawn has to be moved, and that starts the game. And just as Satan all throughout history with Nimrod and Eusebius and all the Caesars, he's been trying to bring this to pass, but he can't. Well, the devil can't bring this to pass because he wants to control the world. See, Jesus is our shepherd. Shepherds walk forward and the sheep follow them of their own free will. But the people that are following the devil are referred to as goats. Goat herders get behind the goats and they beat them and drive them. Our master is our great shepherd. He says, follow me of your own free will. And we're following him. And he leads us to green pastures and besides still waters. But those that follow the devil, he'll promise you everything. But he's a hard taskmaster. And he wants to control and manipulate this world. Well, what's stopping him from doing it? The Apostle Paul told the church of Thessalonica this, referring to this whole subject. In 2 Thessalonians 2.3, he says, Let no man deceive you by any means. Why would he say that? Unless men are going to try to deceive you. For that day, what day? He's going to tell us in a minute. Shall not come except there come a falling away first. That falling away in the Greek is the word apostasia, which means an apostasy. People are going to come away from the faith. Like Judas was a follower of Jesus, and he had an apostasia. He fell away from Jesus and became demon-possessed and turned Jesus in. And Jesus said it would have been better for him if he would have never been born. He says, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who's the man of sin? Who's the son of perdition? This Antichrist. None of these things can happen until he is revealed. And that word revealed in the Greek means to take the cover off. Just like when I was a kid, I'd come home from playing outside all day, and I'd come in the house and, boy, something smells good for dinner. Mom, what's for dinner? And I wouldn't know until I took the pot off the cover off the pot and say, oh, we're having spaghetti or whatever. Then I knew once I took the cover off. Well, I believe, because of all this technology, how close we are, I believe the Antichrist is here, but he's not being revealed yet. And all these things that these men have in store, it's all ready to go. It can't take place fully the way they want until something is taken away. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7, he says, Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things? I wish I had a dollar for every time over the past 47 years that I've been following Jesus, that when I talk about this stuff, people, and then when I became, got in the ministry and became a pastor, people said, Why do you talk about that? That's so negative. People just want to hear Jesus loves you and God is good. All right, are you listening to me? Jesus loves you and God is good. But that's not all the message we're supposed to talk about. Anytime I talk about this, people say, that's so negative. I don't want to hear that. Well, guess what? The Apostle Paul talked to the church of Thessalonica about this. He says, I told you these things. And now ye know what withheldeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Let me say, that sounds like a tongue twister. What does that mean? What Paul is telling the church of Thessalonica, this son of perdition cannot be revealed until something that's holding, it's called the restrainer of lawlessness, is taken out of the way. So what is it? Is it God? We can't take God out of anything. He's God. Well, some people say the Holy Spirit's going to be removed from the planet Earth. Well, Jesus said, No man comes unto me unless the 
spirit first draws him. And people are going to get saved in the tribulation period. So how can the Holy Spirit not be there? Because if he's not there, he can't draw people to Jesus. And also, if the Holy Spirit is not on the planet Earth, guess what? That word we talked about before, he's no longer omnipotent or omnipresent or all-powerful. He's, if he's not, he's allowed to go everywhere in the universe except the planet Earth. No, who is the restrainer of lawlessness? Who's the one that's stopping this from all taking place? You. The church. It's us. Jesus said, you're the salt to the earth. And what salt does is it adds flavor, but it stops things from rotting. And we, the church, are what's stopping all this. That's why they hate us so much. And the persecution's only going to grow. We've been seeing it around the world. We're starting to sense it here in America. This hatred for Christians. Because we're the ones that are stopping it. It's like you turn the lights on and all the cockroaches run away. Have you ever walked in the middle of a meeting somewhere and someone's telling a dirty joke or gossiping about somebody and you just walk in and all of a sudden they stop? Why? It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus living in you. We are the restrainer of lawlessness. So what that means is, as close as we are to all these things happening, they can't happen until we're taken out. So you know what that means? Do you realize how close we are to the rapture? Where the church is removed from this earth? John 16, 33, Jesus said, These things I've spoken unto you, that you might have peace. Don't worry about the world going crazy. He says, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. You want to have tribulation? You want to be all nervous and stressed out? Just keep thinking about what's going on in the world. You want to have some peace? Just focus on Jesus. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me. And he says, because you know what? I've overcome this world. You think Jesus is worried about anything? You just hold on to him. Now, there's two important things to remember with this whole subject that I'm talking about. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. God did not leave us here in the dark and say, well, good luck, hope you make it, up, make it through and you figure it all out. No, he doesn't want us to be ignorant. You know, one of the... The greatest compliments I ever had was by a good friend of mine who used to attend this church. And he told me the church that he goes to now, a bunch of the men went to a restaurant to have a men's breakfast. And, um, you know, they bowed and prayed their heads so the waitress figured they were Christians. And she came up to them in the middle of their breakfast and said, can I ask you guys a question? My son just became a Christian like what I think you guys are. And he keeps talking about like this antichrist and one world government. And, you know, do you, do you anybody, you, do you know what that means? And they all looked at her and went, huh, what? Huh? They do nothing. But my friend that used to attend this church says, I know. And he went to another table and sat down and explained it all to her. Now, I'm not saying, oh, look at me, I'm great. No, I'm saying, look at me. This is what every pastor in America should be talking about. And going back to that podcast with Joe Rogan, he said, I don't hear anyone talking about this. Well, why not? The way that it goes in the pulpit is the way it goes in the country. And the pulpit has been way too quiet about things of social interest. Yes, our kingdom is in heaven. That's the one we're working for. But he said to occupy until he comes. So we need to talk about these things. And I'm giving you this information so you can share it with all your friends and family so that they won't be ignorant of the devil's devices. And in Matthew 10, 33, Jesus said this, But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. I guarantee you I am never going to kneel before some orb and let him scan my eye. Now if six guys hold me down and put an orb over me and scan my eye, there's nothing I can do about that. But I'm not doing it of my own free will. 
I'm not going to deny Jesus. And if I pledge allegiance to some world organization, oh, please take care of me. You know what Benjamin Franklin said? Those that are willing to give up their freedom for security deserve neither. I'm not going to let some government or some big entity take care of me. My protector is the creator of the universe. And in him have I put my trust. And I'm not going to pledge allegiance to anyone but him and him alone. And then I'm going to end with this. We, as the followers of Jesus, the only mark we want, we've already got. It's in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. When you gave your life to Jesus and said, I'm going to follow you, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. What the devil does is nothing but counterfeit. He puts a mark on people, just like God put the mark of Cain on Cain for killing his brother Abel. That's what he does. God puts a seal that says, you belong to me, you're mine. That's what we already have if you're following Jesus, and that's the only one I want. And there's no way I'm going to take that mark, that seal off so I can get the mark to follow some world organization. Ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. And he says, this seal that he's put on us, you know what it is? It's the earnest of his inheritance. If you're selling your car, and I come over and I drive around the block and I say, yeah, I really like this. I want to buy that. And I give you $500 as a down payment. Just hold this. That's called my earnest money to prove to you I want you to hold that car because I'm really serious about buying it. I just got to go get some more money or get a loan or something. But I really am serious about this. Well, the seal that God puts upon us is his earnest to say, I'm serious about this. You belong to me. And you're going to have this eternal inheritance. And you know what it is? I think you know. We're heirs. And joint heirs with Jesus. When we get into the next kingdom, someday when I step out of this body and the real Dave comes out, everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to me. And you know what belongs to him? All things were made by him, and the things that were not made by him were not made. Everything in existence belongs to Jesus, so it belongs to me, and it belongs to you. Am I going to give that up for what this world has to offer? I don't think so. That's called dumber than dumb. And I'm not the smartest guy you ever met, but I'm smarter, smart enough to know I ain't going for that one. So I'm just going to end with this. A lot of people, you're all here, you're seeing me in person, but a lot of people hear me on audio tape, YouTube, a lot of different ways. For anyone that's listening, I don't know how you're listening to me, where you're getting this information. Like the Apostle Paul says, I humbly beseech you, I'm begging you, don't get that mark. And you know what? You can avoid even have to be put in that position by right now giving your life to Jesus. And saying, you be my Lord and Savior. And then when he takes out the restrainer of lawlessness, the church, you're going with him. And we're not even going to have to be a part of that. So I'm going to pray with anyone who might be listening and anybody here. I want you to pray this with me. Pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I, believe I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on a cross for my sins. I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sins. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. And Holy Spirit, seal me with the mark of Jesus. Amen. Praise team. Come on up.